and one of Asia's most popular medicinal roots into a powdery health supplement. Lurking just below the surface of this mountain range is an ancient species. Some say its fleshy body mimics the human form and that it possesses almighty healing powers. Wild Ginseng Ginseng was first discovered in China over 3,000 years ago, and today it is a much sought after herb throughout Northeast Asia. This may look like your average garden weed, but beneath the surface lies green gold. For centuries, the ginseng root has been used as a tonic to treat a range of conditions. Traditionally used in soups and teas, cooking this tough little root can be a time-consuming process. For those that can't spare the time, this might be the answer. All the nutrients of ginseng condensed into a little bottle of powder that takes but a few minutes to prepare. When it comes to turning an ancient medicinal root into a modern health supplement, how do they do it? This is a farm with a very paranoid owner. And what he's keeping a close eye on is not likely to sprout legs and run. This is his ginseng plot. By the 16th century, wild ginseng was becoming scarce, so people in Korea started to grow it themselves on farms like this. This plant is picky about its growing conditions. If sunlight is too strong, the plant's leaves wither, reducing the duration of growth. And the soil must drain efficiently, so clay sand is preferable. But it's worth pandering to its every whim, because these young roots will sell for a hundred US dollars a pot. That's if he doesn't eat it all. But this guy's not gonna settle for silver when he can go for gold. And not the shiny kind. He's venturing beyond the farms, deep into Korea's mountains, to look for wild ginseng, Asia's green gold. Only the most experienced can find this king of roots. And that's why they call him the master. To spot ginseng, you need a keen eye, a natural compass, and the fancy names for some trees. And when ginseng is spotted, he lets the whole world know in the traditional ginseng digger way. Ah, 가지가 네 개고 잎이 다 새긴 거 보니까 이게 4933 정 4933 봤다 신 봤다. He needs to dig delicately so the root isn't damaged in the process. It can take up to half a day to retrieve a single root. So why all the hype about the old stuff? Research suggests that ginseng lowers blood sugar and enhances immune function. And according to the earliest written account of ginseng, it quiets the spirit and curbs emotion. <laughs> but it's worth pandering to its every whim, because ginseng is priced by age, and these eight-year-old roots will sell for a hundred US dollars a pop. But not all of us have the time to hunt for wild ginseng. There may be an easier way to get your ginseng fix. That's where these scientists come in. They take a piece of 100-year-old ginseng and perform stem surgery, searching for a very tiny part of the plant, the stem cell. Stem cells are the reasons plants regenerate throughout lifetimes that can span hundreds of years. Plant stem cell is a cell that has the abilities to both replenish itself by cell division and also to change into a variety of uh, distinct uh, specialized cells. These cells are located in the tips of a plant's roots and shoots and in tissue called the vascular cambium. But they're notoriously difficult to find. Scientists in this room are working to extract the stem cells with the hope of harnessing the essential nutrients of ginseng. 
they have christened the stem cell Dobule, or another star in Korean. This has never been accomplished previously and is a major breakthrough in plant biotechnology. This means that they can grow the cells in a lab instead of hunting for wild ginseng, saving the rare root from extinction and our ginseng master a lot of time and effort. But really, how do you extract a tiny microscopic stem cell? I'm sorry, but top secret. Well, that's us told, isn't it? Once they have what they believe to be ginseng stem cells, they are cultured in these jars, where they grow and grow and grow at an alarming rate. When they run out of room in the lab, over a trillion cells in a 400-litre tank are driven here for the final stage of the culture process. This is the only place big enough to house a mammoth three-ton tank. These aren't your garden variety mold. They need special nutrients, which are put into the tank and mixed for 10 minutes. Water is pumped in at a comfortable 21 degrees centigrade and gently aerated. Fussy cells are then emptied into their giant jacuzzi through a sterilized pipe. If they clump together, the cells can't get the nutrients they need to survive. So in case the aeration isn't doing its job, a computer-controlled blade keeps them moving. Fifteen days later, there's a whole new generation of cells ready for collection. It takes more than a colander to strain these minute cells, or dobule, and that's where this strange contraption comes in. Pressure is used to push the liquid out of the tank to a filter press. This pressure Four hours later, dobule cake is scraped off the filter and collected in metal trays. These cells are actually ready to eat as they are, but it would be like chewing on a wet sponge. So these nice chaps take it away to get the moisture out. And bring it to what looks like a Japanese capsule hotel, but is actually a 200 kilogram freeze dryer. Bacteria are all around us and they need a moist environment to grow. Freeze drying removes water from the cells while leaving the structure and composition intact. Once turned into powder, it can be kept bacteria-free and without refrigeration for many years. Three days later, the ginseng powder is ready for packaging. It is weighed and put into a bottle designed to keep moisture out. Under the cap is a little container of silica gel. These are beads with a high surface area that allow them to absorb water. Any moisture that creeps in is quickly sucked up by the beads, leaving the powder germ-free. The bottles are then carefully hand-packed to ensure quality. And bingo! Easy to use ginseng powder made from what its manufacturer claims are over 1 billion stem cells straight from the plant. All this while, the master is still looking for his root.